Howdy, my friends, and welcome back to more or less play Gran Turismo 4. This is Sky Hurricane, and we're going to go ahead and move on to the 90s challenge. So let's see. Hmm. Let's look at Japan only. Let's see what I got as far as 90s. It's got my Impreza, but that's way too overpowered. <laughs> uh, I spent all that money on that Impreza, and I hadn't really even used it much. Got our MR2 Spider. Nismo 270R. Huh. Yeah, let's use this thing. Well, <laughs> it might not let me use it because it might say, you must be a production car. Or whatever. I don't know if this counts as a production car. Before I do any tuning to it, I'm going to actually be smart and I'm going to check it. I should have done this every time. Oh, 70. 90. Oh, doesn't work. Well, crap, I'm at it. Well, I guess we'll be using that MR2 Spider. I hate to do that, but... It's, uh... Because it's already been used for so many things. Ears. Yeah, really all the choice I have. Unless yeah, let's pick something else. Let's pick a car that I just really love. This thing here. Uh, interesting shade of blue for that. It's a car that I really want to drive right now. I do love those Mozart 7s. It's pretty cheap too. Hmm. Tempting. Very tempting. Very tempting. Tiger Type R. Lancer's awfully cheap too. Oh, Zark 7 Type RZ 95. Oh, yeah, I like this. I like those wheels. Sweetness. All right, and of course we're gonna get an oil change because you know, gotta do that. And I'm not gonna really do much to this car. I mean, I think it already probably has good handling and everything. I mean, it's an RX-7. You know, amazingly, RX-7s are pretty cheap in this game, but. I think in real life they're super expensive, at least they were last time I checked on like uh, eBay and stuff. But that may not be the, that may not have been the best place to buy them, I don't know where you'd buy one now. You, know. uh, you can find anything on eBay, but uh, let's tune this baby up a little, we're not going to do much to it. Let's get a stage one turbo, or turbo, <laughs> stage one weight reduction, we're not getting a turbo. I have a feeling for this 90s challenge, they're probably not going to be very challenging. It makes a surprise that don't have more than 256 horsepower. I guess just for good measure, I probably should get this because. Golly, this sure saved me with that Alpine that I drove. Golly, the thing was freaking a handful. Okay, get all this drivetrain stuff, I guess.
except for the transmission. Normal transmission should be fine. Okay, Let's see what this can do. It is my birthday, February 1st. Yay! Alright. We'll come back to you later, 70s Classics. What about this combat car? 4,000 millimeters or less. I ought to remember that. about the same length as the same length as the last races were three to four laps all right oh what good lord I'm glad I didn't tune this any well this has about the same amount of power that the has a little bit more power than the Karina had but it's heavier but it's an RX-7, so you know it's going to handle much better. I think we need all this stuff here. I'm going to minimize all this stuff here because, well, I don't think we're going to have much wheel spin. We probably would if this were tuned up, but. Okay. Most of these are front wheel drives. Wow, 41 points, really? Every one of these is front wheel drive, except for the uh, 180SX. I love this arc 7 Brings me back to Gran Turismo 1 days, man. This was like one of the best cars in GT1. In the uh, Tune Car Championship, you would often burst this car, man, and it was, it was freaking awesome. Yeah, just as I suspected, man, this thing... Handles very well and it's controllable. Probably going to be running away with all these. <laughs> all these little front wheel drive. I would say front wheel drive hatchbacks, but only the Starlet's hatchback, I guess. Well, and the Civic. The Civic's hatchback. So maneuverable in comparison to that Karina. So maneuverable and fluid, man. It it turn it it turns and that Karina you had to fight to make it turn. Man, this is like crazy. I'm expecting the 180SX to to take over and pass all of them, but I don't know. I may be wrong. I'm sure some of these will have some more fierce opposition. Because I'm sure you can have an, uh, an NSX in some of these. And the Starlet is still leading. That Starlet actually handles pretty good, I think. This car does swerve a little bit. I probably should increase that initial torque to diminish that. It doesn't need much increasing, but a little bit would help. Wouldn't hurt.
do, 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 do. Oh, the eclipse passed. Oh, the eclipse probably has more power, but. I also remember the Eclipse in one championship flying off the road. Well, I think it was the Turbo Championship. <laughs> the Eclipse is actually pulling away. What the heck? I'm disappointed in that freaking 180SX. What's it doing? I had higher expectations for you. It looks like they closed in on the Eclipse. Somebody did anyway. Not by much. It's a shame they wouldn't let me use that 270R or whatever it was. Cause probably would have worked just fine for this well it probably would have been even less high speed points because it had more power I think not much more power Oh, there you go, 180SX. It heard me talking about it, didn't it? Well, hey, bro, you talking crap. I'll show you. Yeah, there we go, 180SX. I knew you would take over. Although you still were over 20 seconds behind. And you probably should have passed all them suckers on the first lap, but... You know. I guess it happens. Oh, man, what a beautiful car. What a beautiful car. I'm a big ARC 7 fan. Not as much as I love Celicas, but you know, Celicas are just too awesome. It's a hard shoe to feel. <laughs> uh, just like that, I passed them all. Just like that. Will the other races be more interesting? I don't know. What I do know is we're not really winning much for this. It's another reason I was disappointed I had to buy something, but oh well. I guess I didn't have to buy something. I could have used my MR2 Spider. Could have used that. All right, how's this race gonna go? What do we got? Oh, wow. Really? <laughs> That's what y'all are going to give me? My. Wow. The Mazda Miata probably is the best one of all those. I don't know that Nissan Primera or the Infiniti G20, whatever you want to call it. It's pretty good, too. 50 point race. I don't know why. I really don't. It's even more points than the last one. <laughs> we got the Mazda Lantis or 323F. I like that car. It has pretty cool styling. That car also makes me think of Gran Turismo 1. How they just throw the Lantis and the Accord sedan in that GT World Championship. Oh man, it's so funny. Oh my gosh. Okay, I forgot to change the initial torque. Car is definitely reminding me that I needed to change that. Well, we're definitely not soaring to victory as quickly on this one as we did on the last one. I mean, heck, we had them all in the first freaking. But I think this was a rolling start, wasn't it? Yeah, that makes a big difference. The rolling start definitely makes it 
Ow. Crap. Let's hit these cones. Rolling start makes it to where you have to work a little bit harder to catch up. You can't just pass everybody on the first five seconds of the race. Still not hard though, I don't know why this is a 50 point race. I felt like I was going slow around that, but... Oh wow. Whoa, car, what are you doing? Okay, and the Del Sol's just putting along. It ain't in, in any hurry to catch me. I gotta change that initial torque. Let's hit these cones. <laughs> How far can I push them? Here, let's get some more. Oh, wee! Cones everywhere. And I'm three seconds ahead. Oh my gosh. One of the cones actually is way over here. I bet another one of the cars hit it. Oh gosh, man. This is hilarious. And I'm leading this race. Doing all right. Okay, let's try not to be retarded like we were last time here. Except I was retarded again. Okay, yeah. Golly, Cone, you need to go a little further. Adele So was still leading, but then again, this opposition, though. I hit all those cones. <laughs> way over here now. Yay, I hit it again. Score. <laughs> oh, I'm way too easily amused. Look at him. Oh my gosh. Cones everywhere, man. I feel very accomplished. Golly, how am I even this far ahead. That was a pretty decent lap. All things considered. I was going for those cones. <laughs> I really was. I was like, uh, I don't want to hit it, but it's kind of far out there. Man, why'd they have to put them so far out there? Take the fun out of it, man. Ten point eight seconds. What are y'all doing? Hit it. <laughs> oh, hit him. Oh, my God. y'all catch up wow he was 13 seconds before I did all that gosh I need to get serious this is <laughs> this is ridiculous I usually am very serious I, I don't know what's gotten into me it's not like me hitting counts is so fun Oh man, the Miata almost passed. <laughs> Caught up eight seconds, man, from my stupid escapades. And that Lanta sucks. Sucks.
look at all these 90s cars. I uh, definitely got to change that initial torque though. Definitely got to remember to do that. Pause the versus pause. I really don't know why that was a 50 point race. That was super easy. I, mean, I expect to see some Lancers and things like that. But I guess what better place to put the in <laughs> What better place to put these cars in, though, I guess. So I'm kind of glad they did this, but... If I'd known it was this kind of opposition, uh, I would have... Picked something, you know, more fitting for this. Ooh. Okay, Twin Ring Motegi. I wonder if it's the long or the... It's probably the short course. Since it's three laps. We'll see. Yeah, East Short Course. Cool. Alright, we got a Sylvia Q's. FTO. Oh, we do got a Sylvia K's, though. 91. Alright, it will. The Sylvia K's probably is going to kill all the other ones. Let us increase this initial torque. Yeah, it's been on 15. I don't think we need it super strong or anything. This handle's pretty good for the most part. It just kind of could use a little more stability, you know, on high speed corners. 52 points. Kicking it up. An extra two points higher. Oh, my file is only 82% uploaded. And that was hours ago, man. But then again, it was 30, 30 gigabytes. But man, if that works, I will be so relieved to God. That was probably like 10 parts ago when I mentioned that. I don't, I don't remember. But I really don't want to lose all that footage, you know, with me doing the IA license and all that stuff. That would suck. Very bad. This Sylvia Q's is getting down. Okay, I don't know why I went down the first gear. y'all I think I'm gonna let granny do like the next race cuz what's the point in me doing them it's just gonna be total annihilation like you're seeing here whoa okay unless that happens and then well things get a little more interesting said not really I mean we're still like right behind him Figured the uh, Sylvia K's would wipe the floor with the rest of these, and I'm, I wasn't wrong. But you kind of pushed me off the road there, dude. Man, I've had horrible driving in this video. This Sylvia, he's kind of a wild card, huh? He drives weird. He drives kind of like I do. I mean, he's. Not driving like most of the computers do, you know. He's kind of unpredictable. Okay, but we got around him. And now it is time for us to pull away like crazy.
crazy as crazy can be anyway. I guess if I really wanted this to be more ice pick points, I could always um, add a ballast or something. That was a cool thing. This is the first game that you could do that in. Add a ballast. Oh man, and just like that, I lost him. Six seconds. Just like that, man. Six seconds. You gotta kind of be careful in this section because could lose control. Yeah, did really well that time. Yeah, I knew the Sylvia Cays was gonna dominate compared to the other computers but Sylvia Q the car that you see in the Sunday Cup of the Grand Turismo 1 where it all began man where it all began tell you what man as many hours as I've spent other, playing other Gran Turismo's, I think I've probably still spent more time playing Gran Turismo 1. Although 4 probably has the second most, because it spent a lot of time with 4. Once I got it, got like 10.7 seconds. So GT1 definitely has a special place in my heart. Even though Gran Turismo has come a long way since then. Alright. The Sylvie Q went down to fifth. The FTO stayed sixth. And the Civics moved up a little bit. 13.3. Wow. I don't even want to see that. I'm ashamed of y'all. <laughs> Okay. So special stage wrap up, what does it say there? A heated battle of Japanese cars from the era where they were finally realizing their ambitions on the world stage. Yeah, because I guess, yeah. Because really, I guess the European cars and American cars were the ones that were really, you know, taking the notice, I guess. Japanese cars weren't really that noticeable in the 80s. All right. And then in the 90s, they started kind of becoming cool. And, you know, more, more commonly imported in the U.S. and everything. All right. Well, they were imported well before that, but you know what I mean. Especially the Drive 5 Reverse. I'm going to let Granny do this. We've got nothing. Well, we got a Sylvia Q's, but... Mm, golly, this is the Sunday Cup all over again in, <laughs> in Gran Turismo 1. Well, let's let Granny do it. Let's see how she does. I'm going to put her on four, though, because I don't know how well she'll control this car. I think she can do this. I mean, golly. I've won every race by 10 plus seconds, except for Grand Valley East, where I was trying to hit cones. It's been announced. <laughs> uh, I was going on a cone mission. Because you don't have enough of those in the coffee breakers game. Alright, come on Granny. Pass it Sylvia. 
Sylvia is a granny car. Even more of a granny than you are. Right. Past the Del Sol, who was the leader for most of the race in the Green Valley. She got around it. Yeah, I knew this was going to be easy. I knew it. Well, we got a beautiful cell again, friend. Man, that is a beautiful car. Beautiful. Sexy, man. Look at that. Gosh. Meanwhile, Granny, she is surging through the lines, hitting walls, driving like a regular Granny on a Sunday morning. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Go, Granny, go. She's catching the prelude. Yeah. Granny's going to probably almost pass all of them before the end of the first lap. And that's saying something for Granny. I mean, that really is saying something. No, she's having a hard time with this prelude. Um, she's trying, but that's not really a good line to pass, even though I probably would do it. I just knocked the prelude out of the way, which is not what you're supposed to do. Oh, look at Granny passing on the outside. I'm trying, anyway. That prelude just don't have the speed. Then again, Granny had to hit the brakes like an idiot. And the prelude is drafting, so... Sell KSS is fast. Granny, what are you doing? Look at her. The poor little prelude. Oh. <laughs> Granny. It was just hitting the prelude for no reason. Violent, man. Well, meanwhile, back here. Honda Del Sol went down to fifth. Or is it the Sylvia Q that passed and then got repassed? I don't know. At any rate, Granny, she's going for the title now. She's going after the Celica. Can she defeat it? One thing I don't understand with this game, I really wish it did. It doesn't show you the tire wear of the other cars. Even Gran Turismo 3 did that, which was freaking awesome. Gran Turismo 3 did quite a few things that I liked that were better than the other Gran Turismo's. And I know some people, that's their favorites. It used to be my least favorite, but I, after LPing it all the way through, I definitely think I like it more than five, and maybe even more than one. Although one has a lot of sentimental value to me. Alright, well Granny, she already she already passed, so let's just speed up the rest of this, shall we? See how far ahead Granny can get. Oh, yep, the Sylvia Q, it passed the Del Sol. Oh, little Del Sol. It's last now. Now, Sylvia Q is gaining on the prelude, too. Those little orange arrows, that's what it indicates. And Granny, she is almost five seconds ahead. Look at her. Man, I tell you what. Fourth, fifth, and sixth were all really close to each other. 7.3 seconds. Dang, the Sylvia Q. Golly, look at that. That was a tight battle. And Sylvia Q was going after those preludes. Going after those Hondas. All right. I think we got one more. I don't know. I kind of enjoyed that. I kind of enjoy sitting back and watching things unfold, see how it goes. Uh, depending on what the next race is, I might. Oh, Fuji Speedway. Uh, I've done Fuji Speedway 90 so many times. Do y'all want to see me do this and beat the grannies by 20 seconds, or do you want to see Granny do it? I kind of want to see Granny take it for a spin. Let's see, we got another Celica SS2. Hmm. 
all front engine front wheel drive cars. Yeah. Either way, I'm going to dominate this race, so let's just let Granny do it. Let's see how quickly she can take over. All front engine front wheel drive cars, wow. They really got original with this, didn't they? I love how she hard brakes. Well, the Civic went down the last. Didn't have very good acceleration, I see. Civic's actually a pretty good car in GT1 and 2, but... Kinda, I don't know. All the front-wheel drives kind of really suck in this game, though. Prelude's a really good car in Gran Turismo 1. <laughs> kind of funny. I've actually won, like with the Prelude and the FTO, I've won every race in the GT World Championship with those cars. Version like the Impreza Rally Edition and the Nismo GTR and stuff. It's pretty awesome. It's amazing, man. How far Gran Turismo's come. <laughs> because I guess that really wasn't realistic. But then again, you know, with the racing modification and the, all the bells and whistles, man, I guess really can make a huge difference. I really wish they'd bring those racing modifications back. But I guess that would really be a lot of programming in to do for all of the cars, you know. Considering that Gran Turismo has really upped the count so much. That Celica's getting down. We're having a hard time passing it. The FTO's getting down. Well, that's the GP version R, too. So that's like the best FTO version. Whoa, Celica, what in the heck? I do not know what happened there. We got some overtakes going on here. <laughs> Even the Civics trying to get back in on the action. Well, the RX-7 got around the Celica. We can just take on this FTO. Granny needs the experience too, man. And golly, this is a 50 ace big point race. I imagine Granny's really getting a lot of experience with this as well, even though it's not a hard race. Not with this car. Now it probably would be if I had, if I said, hey, uh, uh, if I had like the Celic SS2 or something. Because it just doesn't, doesn't have the handling of this RX-7. Not in this game. Come on now, you can, do, you can take on that FTO, come on. FTO's pretty fast on the straight line though. I can see why it's 50 points. Of course, the FDO comes stock with almost 200 horsepower. That FTO does 197, I think. Oh man, that FTO actually is as fast, I think. Of course, now that we're grafting, we're faster. If Granny will actually pass, oh, she is. Oh, she went on the wrong side though, smartly. Oh man, last lap. Oh, but it's all over now. It's all over. Cute little Celica. The FTO GR. Well, they're all kind of spread out. The Prelude definitely is the worst, I guess. Because it just went all the way down the last. Let's speed this up. Slash lap since we already 
we can actually, it's kind of, <laughs> they actually ran off the road. I missed that. That's what the little icon means on the right. Well, the biggest gap is between our car and the FTO. Yay, we won. Six second lead just from that one lab. Wow. The Celica was four seconds behind the FTO. And the FTO GR was further behind that. Alrighty. Interesting race. Hmm. And the poor prelude never made it. And that is the 90s challenge. Hey everybody. Wasn't it fun and entertaining? I have to say, I enjoyed driving this RX-7. It was a pleasure to drive. And we win the Nismo 400R. I actually really do like that car, but eh, they had to give me red, didn't they? So all we got is the 70s Classics and the compact car. I really want to finish all these in this session. That would be my goal. Now where's that 400 R? There it is, 401 horsepower. Man, what a beast. I think I am gonna sell it though, because I hate red. Sorry, this is my 400 R. If they'd given me any other color, I would've kept it. <laughs> I discriminate like that. I was tempted to sell the Ford RS200, but I figure it's a lot more rare and more annoying to try to win because you have to do the Grand Canyon. Whereas I could win the 400R again if I really wanted to. I mean, you saw how Granny dominated in that. All right, well, what's our status? 27.3%, 13,090 points. B-spec level went up a lot. Granny, she's getting on up there now. She's only gone 47 miles, though. That will definitely change when we do the endurance. She'll actually probably pass me, especially when it comes to the 24-hour race, because whew, that's a long race. It's a long race for me. Now, let's see if we got any 70s cars. Oh, oh, I got excited. I saw the Jensen Interceptor, and I got all excited. Well, darn. That is not a Japanese vehicle. Hmm. Dang, that sucks. That Bluebird would be the best thing. Oh, that sucks. I don't know why I'm looking at this. Acura NSX Coupe. Oh, wow, that looks cool. Bright yellow. Caught in my eye. Well, I do need a compact car, so hold on, I'm just, well, never mind, I'll just end this video here, so. Thank you all very much for watching. We'll hunt down a Japanese compact in the next part, so I hope to see y'all there. This has been Sky Hurricane. Have a super awesome, blessed day, and as always, my friends, stay awesome. Goodbye, y'all.